with Jesus. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Good morning. Um, and we are on Parables with Jesus. All right. And this is episode 15. Now, we are talking about the Good Samaritan, the parable of the Good Samaritan. This is episode 15. So we're going to go to Luke chapter 10, verse 25. All right. Luke chapter 10, verse 25. All right. But before we do, thank you everybody for watching. Please share this video. Share it with somebody. Uh, uh, tell them that you're on here. Um, sh let's share the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we don't want to just keep it to ourselves. We want to share what God is doing for your life and for somebody else's life. Amen. But we're going to have fun. This is, good. this is going to be a blessing. I believe it's going to bless you. I believe it's going to uplift you. I believe it's going to change some things in your life. Amen. And so let us pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. We want to thank you for, for just waking us up this morning, Lord God. I know that there's some people that didn't wake up this morning, Lord God. And so we want to thank you for another chance, another day, another opportunity of life, Lord God. And Lord, let us make the best of it today, Lord God. Lord, uh, uh, open up our ears, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, and our souls, Lord God, to be able to receive everything that you want us to receive, Lord God. Let us hear from your word. Let it be you that speaks in our lives, Lord God, not of my flesh, but of your spirit, Lord Jesus. I thank you in your precious name. Amen. Amen. I hope you're excited. Amen. I'm fired up. So, so when God was telling me about the parable of the Good Samaritan, I was like, ah, I've already done that. I've, you know, it's, it's like, but then God gave me this whole new thing. Watch this. This is, this, is, this is so amazing. Amen. So we're going to Luke chapter 10, verse 25. And this is Jesus. A parable is Jesus telling a story to, 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 to illustrate uh, uh, something that he wants to get across. A message. Amen. And so watch this. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit, inherit eternal life all right so a lawyer stood up and what does it say trying to test him all right and he says teacher what shall I do to to inherit inherit eternal life sorry my Mexican sometimes comes out so I say things a little in Spanglish or something like that all right si sí, señor si sí, señor Dios tú eres todo poderoso that is God you are all powerful all right, but that doesn't say that. That's just me speaking. All right, so the lawyer said, he stands up. He wants to test Jesus, and he says, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? So Jesus answers, answers his question with a question. Now, my wife sometimes answers my question with a question, and I don't like it. I do not like it. Amen. And so, but Jesus is very smart, okay? When people try to outwit Jesus, Jesus is just too good. He's God. He's all powerful. Watch this. So Jesus asks him a question. He goes, what is written in the law? This is a lawyer, you guys. This is a lawyer asking Jesus, how does he get into heaven, right? And Jesus goes, Okay, well, you're a lawyer. What is written in the law? Ooh. But see, that's not the law of man. Jesus is talking about the law of God. Amen? He's talking about the law of God. All right, so watch. And then, and then Jesus says, what is your reading of it? So what have you read? What have you understood in the law? Right? This is a lawyer, you guys. Watch this. So he answered and said, and this is the lawyer. The lawyer is answering here. And he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus says, and he said to him, 
you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. Okay. And then the lawyer says, but he wanted to justify himself and said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? See, the lawyer is trying to find a loophole. The lawyer is trying to say, well, because the, the word says what? The law says, and this is God's law, you should love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? And so the lawyer, he's trying to find the loophole. He's trying to find, see, lawyers are, are, are smart, and they're always trying to find a way that they can break the law but not get in trouble, right? They're trying to find that little loophole. Yes, Your Honor, he was drunk, but the law says this, right? They're, they're, I mean, lawyers are good at what they do, all right? They're trying to find that little loophole. And so this lawyer knows that he is not good enough. He can't keep that law. So he's trying to find that loophole where he will be able to get into heaven. He's trying to find that little loophole. What is the loophole? Right? Okay. But before Jesus answers, watch. I want to emphasize what the law is. What is the law? What is God's law? It says, it, I mean, he already told you. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. So, the law of God says, love me with all your heart. This law is a commandment for us to love God with all our heart. But not only there. Right? It says, with all your heart. What else? With all your soul with all your strength, and with all your mind. So love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And then he tells us, he even take, God even takes it further than that. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is God's commandment, guys. So, Jesus said, well, you've read the law. What does the law say? Because God knows that we're not perfect. We're going to break rules. But this is a, a very important commandment. All right? Because if you can do this, you can accomplish a lot of things. If you can love God with all your heart, then guess what? then when you're fighting with somebody, when you love God with all your heart, it's going to be a lot easier for you to accept how to love other people. See, if you can love God with all your soul, all your spirit, all your most in-being soul, then you're going to obey God. When you obey God, see, you don't have hate, you don't have anger, you don't have all these things that, that, that get us into trouble. This is a commandment. Now, if this is a commandment to us, then God knows he's commanding you to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. If he is commanding, if God is commanding you to do something, then you must be able to do it. God wouldn't command you to do something if he knew that you couldn't keep that commandment. So you have the strength, you have the soul, you have the heart, you have the mind to be able to do this, to love God with all of it. This is about love, guys. This is about love. See, if I love my neighbor, then I wouldn't kill my neighbor, right? If I, if I love my children, then I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hurt my children, right? I might correct them, but that's different. That's still love, see? If you love 
uh, 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 your family, then all those little fights and fussing and everything, uh, uh, it doesn't matter. I had a disagreement with a very good friend of mine, and we didn't see eye to eye on those things. But I still love him, and I still went to him. I love you. I'm committed to this relationship. I'm committed to this friendship because I have love for you. God has commanded me to love God with all my heart, with everything, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. And when he commands us to do this, when we start looking unto God for that love, then it's a lot easier to forgive other people. It's a lot easier to look past some things, uh, shortcomings and all these things that we might dislike. We start loving God. We can start loving how God loves. See, we wouldn't have all these wars and everything if we knew how to love God. So God has commanded us to love. But watch this. This lawyer is trying to find a loophole. And, and, and check this out. We're not even halfway through the parable. This is awesome. Check this out. Jesus is so cool, man. He is so smooth. He is so smooth. So this guy, okay. Watch this. You love your neighbor as yourself, right? Verse 28. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. So Jesus is saying, yeah, do this, you will live. Verse 29. But he wanted to justify himself and said to Jesus, who is my neighbor then? See, he's trying to find that loophole. It's like, okay, I love God with all my heart, with all my mind, whatever. Okay, I can do that. But how do I love my neighbor? And which neighbor? Is it the neighbor beside me? Is it the other neighbor? Uh, you know, he's trying to find a loophole, right? Because he knows that he can't love his neighbor. Right? He's trying to find a loophole. All right? And so Jesus is so cool. He's so smooth that he, check this out. He doesn't even answer that. Right? He doesn't even answer that. He doesn't say, oh, well, everybody's your name. No, no. He just goes into a parable. He's so smooth, man. He just goes straight into a parable. Watch this. Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man, see? He's just like, listen up. Right? Jesus is smooth, man. He's so awesome. Watch this. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down to the road, and we, when he saw him, he passed by the other side. 32. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Okay? So here was a priest... All right. And then here was a Levite. All right. These are your pastors. These are your, your teachers of the law. These are your, your, your good, uh, uh, what you would call them today, Christians or, or, or priests. Or, or, you know, these are the, the guys that have all, the, they're, they're supposed to have all the knowledge of the Bible and know what to do and things of that. They're the teachers. They're the ones preaching it, right? These are your preachers. These are your teachers. These are your evangelists. These are so-called, all those people, right? They came, they saw this man, right? And then they saw this man and they, they passed by him. They didn't stop. They didn't help. Nothing. They saw him. They're like, mm, we don't want to do no part of that. They went to, they crossed the street. They went to the other side. They didn't even walk past him. So these people robbed this man, which was a Jew, okay? Because he came from Jerusalem, so our perception is that Jerusalem, he was a Jewish man. He, he was a Jew. He came out of uh, uh, Jerusalem, he's walking along, and then thieves stripped him, and, and they, they beat him up. They, took, they uh, stripped him of his clothes, wounded him, departed, leaving him half dead. So he's half dead. He needs help, people. 911. And guess what? They just, all the, the preachers, all these people, they're like, mm, no. I ain't even helping you. I ain't even touching you. Right? And then watch what happens. But a certain Samaritan, or another translation, a good Samaritan, says, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Now, 
Why I say good Samaritan? Because some translation says good Samaritan. Not just a certain Samaritan, a good Samaritan. Check this out. Jesus knows that, that, that the Jews do not believe that any Samaritan is good. They do not like the Samaritans. They believe that the Samaritans are lower than they are and that they're not to the same status as they are. So there is no good Samaritan. Jesus says, a good Samaritan. See, they don't believe that there is such a thing as a good Samaritan. Hmm. Okay. This is beautiful. But a, a good Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bondage him, uh, bandage him, not bondage, right? Bandage, right? He's not trying to hurt him. He's trying to save him, all right? His wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. So he, he picked him up. He's trying to put band-aids on him. He's trying to cure his wounds. He picked him up, and then he takes him to an inn, like a hospital, somebody that's going to take care of him, right? 35. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was the neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? So Jesus is asking him another question. So which one do you think was the neighbor? The priest, right? Or the Samaritan? The Samaritan, right? And he says, verse 37, and he said, who showed mercy on him? He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Okay? Now check this out. Because, all right, you're right or die. The people that you think are going to hang with you for, for your life, those people that you think that are always going to have your back, sometimes they're not going to be your good Samaritan. See, these preachers, these ones that were teaching that, th these people that were saying that, they weren't the good Samaritan. They weren't the ones helping him. They, are, they were all talk, but no bite, like we say in the streets, right? All talk, but no bite. All talk, all preaching, but they did not do the work. See? So Jesus is teaching this man what you, what you think the people that you think, he's telling this lawyer, the people that you think that, that, that are the wrong ones, the Samaritans, the ones that you don't like, the ones that you despise, the, ones that, the people that you think are not of your status, right? Those might be the ones that help you out. Everybody is your neighbor. Not the ones that you just hate and the ones that you love. Not the, not the Leviticus priests. Those are the ones you love. And, and then these people over here know, well, I don't like them because they're a different social status. Oh, maybe they, they voted Democratic. Maybe they voted Republican. Oh, maybe they believe in this way and they believe in that way. So I'm not going to, no, no, those, those ain't my neighbors. Or maybe the, that family member that wasn't there or that person. And, and no, no, those ain't my neighbors. No, they're all your neighbors. Don't just pick and choose, right, like these priests did. They were picking and choosing who they were going to help. No, help everybody. Love everybody. Doesn't matter their, their social status. Doesn't matter how many followers they got. It doesn't matter of all these things. God has commanded us to love. And get this, if we only love God first, then we begin to realize how to give that love. When we, we put our love and trust in Jesus Christ, then he begins to show us how to love others. See, when you stick close to God, you begin to act like God. Hmm. When, you, when you hang around Jesus, you begin to act like Jesus. You begin to mimic what Jesus does. And Jesus didn't just talk about it. He was about it. Amen. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. See, there is no loophole. There is no loophole. I'm here to tell you today there is no loophole. Everybody is your neighbor. Whether 
whether they're from a different gang status or from, from whatever, everybody is your neighbor. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Love everybody. The biggest commandment, love God. Stick close to God. And he will show you how to love other people. When they cut you off on traffic, you just say, God, help me. Right? And then you're not going to fight that person. And you're not going to have road rage because you're loving God. And he will teach you how to be patient with other people. See, if we only knew how to love, we wouldn't have wars. We wouldn't have this. If we knew how to love God the way he loves us, we wouldn't do that. And if you, if you love yourself, you're going to love your neighbor. And, and, and watch this. There's a lot of relationships where, where a husband or a wife is beating their husband. Why? Because they don't love themselves. They don't know how to love God. They don't love themselves, and that's why they hurt other people. Hmm. That's for somebody to break free. Listen, that is for you to break free. Begin to love God, and you will, he will break that bondage. He will break those chains. He will break those addictions. When you begin to love God, you will be, be, he will show you how he loves you. And then you will love yourself. And then that outpouring of love will begin to pour on the people around you that you love them too. Listen, you want to break free. Amen. Begin to love God. Begin to get closer to God. And as he loves you, you will begin to, he will show you how he loves you. And you will begin to love yourself. And that outpouring of love will flow on other people around you. That's how you break free. Amen. Not only get into heaven, but that's how you break free on this earth. That's how you truly live. With love. Not only in heaven. Start living on this earth by having love. Love for God. Love for yourself. And love for others. Amen. When you do that, you will tr truly learn how to live. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you hate yourself. God loves you. Get closer to him. He'll show you how to love. Oh, but I hate my family. God loves your family. God loves you. Get closer to God and he will show you how to love no matter what. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that this has encouraged you. And, and, and I pray that this breaks some things free. Because when Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. It's time. It's time that God shows you how to love and truly live. Amen. God bless you. And we're going to pray. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, today is the day. Jesus loves you. Oh, well, you don't know what I've done. You don't know the things that I've done and all the, the, the It doesn't matter. God loves you. Jesus died on the cross for your sins, for all the things that you did, so that you wouldn't have to go to hell, so that you wouldn't die, but you would have eternal life and salvation. He did it for you. It's a free gift, but you must accept it. If you don't accept it, he can't give it to you. He's a perfect gentleman. He doesn't force that gift upon you. Amen. Do you want to receive it today? If that is you, let us pray. Dear God, we just thank you, Lord God. Thank you for forgiving us for our sins, Lord God. We are sorry. Amen. We are sorry of our, of our past. We are sorry for the things that we've done, Lord God. Forgive us. Change our hearts. Change our mindset change our bodies, change, our, change our, our souls, Lord God, that we begin to love and that you would show us how to love. Lord, we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, and we put our trust in you. And, and God, 
We thank you for those that are watching right now that miracles will happen. Things within themselves will, are going to start breaking free. You are free from that hate in the name of Jesus. You are free from your childhood in the name of Jesus. Whatever happened to you in your child, childhood does not define you. God defines you. Show him love. He will show you love as he's showing you love already. And watch what that outpouring will do to others. We thank you, Lord God. We receive your blessings. We receive your miracles. You said by your stripes that we are healed. We claim it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our bodies being healed right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for you breaking some addictions right now in the name of Jesus. We are free because of you. We thank you in your precious name. God bless you, everybody. See you next week. Share this. Go to the website, davidgomezministries.com, and just share the love of Christ today. God bless you.